Grace and peace be unto you from God, our Creator, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is with joy and deep humility that I embrace this opportunity to provide you with a report from the cabinet that captures the life and action of this group over the past year. In my mind, this is an opportune moment to hold ourselves accountable to you and to embrace the burden of pulling back the curtain to give you an insight of our actions and work over the past year. I must confess that we struggle on the best way to communicate information to you that will have value added benefit in this moment. Personally, I remember that as a local pastor appointed to a church and serving in different committees, I would come to the conference center and walk past the door of the Episcopal conference room. The place held a lot of mystery for me back then. I would wonder about what really happens in cabinet. Why a bishop and the cabinet locked behind closed doors for hours on end? Why do I hear what songs like singing and preaching coming from this room? And why, every once in a while, I would see someone leave the room, dab in their eyes, rush to the restroom, and then quickly return. I also noticed before sitting on the cabinet that there were a few things that members of cabinet had in common. I saw that after a while they all seemed to put on some weight. And if one observed closely, you would have noticed a few more gray hair on the heads of members of the cabinet. My conclusion was that behind those doors and for the countless hours that the doors were closed and they were locked away, well, they were having fun and just eating. Siblings of Christ, I've been sitting behind those same locked doors now for six years. My flawed assumption has been blown out of the water. Yes, I do attest that I've acquired some weight and some gray hair, but not for the reason that I have cited before. Can I invite you as a meaningful experience to travel with me and see what happened behind those doors? Sibling in Christ, behind that door are people and overwhelming issues that we struggle with some of which you need to be cognizant of. So let me start by speaking to the people. Behind the door is a bishop that is doing three jobs and work tirelessly to cocoon his decision in grace so that no one is hurt or left behind as he balances the demands of his job. Our bishop is the president of the Council of Bishop. Did you know that? He's the resident bishop to the New York Annual Conference. Did you know that? He is the president of Umcor. Have you ever seen our bishop cry? I have seen him cry as he navigates the weight of this responsibility to live into his commitment to grace, to find a pathway for all to be made whole, even the guilty while caring for his staff and his family. Siblings in Christ, behind the door is an A to B, Zamina Maraz Diaz. A person with a servant heart, combined with high organizational skill and problem solving ability, a great listener, and a common presence in stressful times. She lives into a commitment that says, Bishop, I don't leave until you leave. Don't step away from a task until you do. Whatever sacrifice you make, I am willing to make it for the good of the comfort. Behind the door is the Leadership Development and Intercultural Competency Director, Doris Dalton, who brings her intercultural competency lens to challenge the decision we make as a cabinet. She is an encourager, strategic thinker, and willing to explore many different perspectives. She agitates us as she challenges our biases, and keeps us on the straight and narrow as we make decisions for the good of the conference. Behind the door is our communication director, Lisa Isom, who has assumed the responsibility for three jobs as communication and marketing, director of information technology, 
and project management and consulting. She supports how our bishop and conference is presented to the public and does this with grace and a professional demeanor that is second to none. Aren't you proud of her? Behind the door is Laura Miller, controller, who is holding down the financial operation in the absence of a CFO. She's astute and committed to a sure frugality in the use of the limited resources that you work so hard to provide to your conference. Behind the door is Angela Redmond, CEO, City Society. She brings her skill as an attorney and her savvy as an administrator. She intentionally aligns the resources of the conference and City Society to assure effective ministry within the city of the New York Annual Conference. Behind the door are our district superintendents. Reverend Julia Yeoni Yim, our most senior district superintendent, is a study and calm personality. But here's what you should know. She isn't afraid to speak up and speak out to boldly defend what matters to her most. She's a study champion of the chess course. Behind the door is Reverend Dr. Karen Mark, who brings to us more than 30 years of pastoral ministry and a deep appreciation of the power and witness of tongue and country churches. She's not one to let the newest models and packaging of churches take away a focus on the life-changing and eternal avenue world. She's committed to letting go of some spaces and practices that are no longer serving ministry while trusting God in the letting go and being more Pentecost than Babel in our differences. Behind the door is Reverend Simeon Law, who brings a listening ear to all plus exceptional analytical skill. He's not afraid to challenge ministries to learn about their community, meet needs, build relationships, and share the gospel of Jesus Christ without compromise or reservation. Behind the door is Reverend Nkucha. He's new to the cabinet. But he brings to us a deep spirituality, positive thinking, and a passion for evangelism. There is this ability to grow churches. He champions diversity and is committed to use his experience to grow the churches of the annual conference. Behind the door, siblings in Christ, is our one and only reverend Elizabeth Abel. She brings her experience as a social worker, clinician, a youth development and community developer and organizer. She applies that incredible ability, the ability to listen and be a witness to the stories of the congregation of the Long Island West District. She is unafraid and determined to assure success and growth of the New York Annual Conference. Behind the door, but leaving us, sad to say, are two individuals. Reverend Dr. Marvin Morris, Director of Congregational Growth and Development. He championed the use of data analytics in our decision-making process. His deep insight and congregational growth acumen has pushed us ahead in navigating hard decisions for congregational growth and continued viability for our countries. Behind the door is a person that we love. She's about to leave us. The Reverend Dr. Denny Smart Sears. Her experience as a pastor, district superintendent, and director of Connectional Ministry coupled with her knowledge of the history of our conference, has been invaluable to us. She has decided to extend her gifts to the larger church and yet commits to be a phone call away whenever we need her help. Sibling in Christ, these are the people that have pulled their talents, gifts, and graces to serve our conference over the last year. I would confess that behind those doors 
Yes, we have eaten. <laughs> yes, we have had moments to laugh and to play. Yes, we have banged the table, barked at each other, cried when the moment called for tears, all in a spirit of love. In our goal to bring our best game forward for the good of the conference. And yes, we have lived into a covenant that call on us to lead, to love, to be inclusive, to exercise integrity, to assure personal growth, to build our relationship, and to care for each other. And yes, siblings in Christ, behind these doors, we pray, and we praise, and we cry out to God to help us forward. The power of us behind these doors has made us stronger together. It has enabled us to confront some of the most difficult issues that face us as a conference. 